Hello and welcome to this week's lecture on bivariate tables. After this lecture, students should be able to create and analyze a bivariate table, identify the properties of a bivariate relationship, existence, strength, and direction, and explain how to elaborate the relationship between these variables. First, let's discuss some terminology. Cross-tabulations is a technique for analyzing the relationship between two variables that have been organized into a table, into a bivariate table. Bivariate analysis is the method we are using to detect and describe the relationship between these two variables, and the bivariate table is a table that displays the distribution of one variable across the categories of a second variable, again, a form of this cross-tabulation. Cells can be frequency, percentage, or proportion. In a bivariate table, we have two variables. The column variable is the variable whose categories are the columns of a bivariate table, while the row variable is a variable whose categories are the rows of a bivariate table. Cells are the intersection of a row and a column in a bivariate table and can be frequency, proportion, or percentage. Finally, the marginals are the row and column totals in a bivariate table. So let's take a look at what this looks like in an actual table. So here we have a table, and this is a cross tabulation of the variables highest degree completed here, and homosexual sex relations, people's opinions on this. So here we have our column variable here, the respondent's highest degree of school completed. And here we have the row variable, which is the respondent's attitude or opinion on homosexual sex relationships. Each of these is a cell. So the intersection of less than high school degree and always wrong is a cell. High school and always wrong is a cell. Junior college and always wrong is a cell. Bachelor and always wrong is a cell. Each of these is a cell. And this table here has already calculated both our frequency here as well as our percentages here. So that's already done for us. It has also provided us the marginals. So here is the row marginal and it has the total for people who are who believe that homosexual sexual relationships are always wrong, people who think it's almost always wrong, sometimes wrong, and not at all wrong. You can see the frequency totals here. We're going to ignore the percentage totals just for a moment and I'll explain that later. And finally we have the total number of respondents in this study down here in this corner. And here we have the column totals or column marginals. So here's again the frequency for each column, so less than high school, high school, junior, college, bachelor, and graduate, as well as the total percentages. And finally, again here, the total for the entire table. This is the total number of respondents, or the n for this table. And so when we look at these tables, we are going to be looking at either column percents or row percents. We use column percents if the column is the independent variable, if it's the variable that is doing the explaining. And we calculate these column percents using the cell frequency divided by the marginal frequency total for that column. Row percents are used if the row is the independent variable and are calculated using the cell frequency divided by the marginal frequency total for that row. So again, looking at this table, you can tell that we are using column percentages or column percents because 100% is down here at the bottom of the columns. And if you add up the percentages for, say, less than high school, you can see that 55.6% think that homosexual sex relations are always wrong, 5.1% almost always wrong, 6.1% is sometimes wrong, and 33.3% is not wrong at all. If we add those up, it'll be 100%. And so whenever we're looking at these tables, you can tell which 
we're using, whether it's column percent or row percent, by looking at where the percent totals are. So here at the bottom, we know that they are column percents because we see 100% at the bottom. And so what this says is that rather than saying that 55.6% of people who always think that homosexual sex relationships are wrong are in high school or have less than a high school degree, we are saying that 55.6% of people who have less than a high school education believe that homosexual sex relationships are always wrong. We calculate this by taking the frequency here for the cell, which is the intersection of less than high school and always wrong, and dividing it by the total marginal frequency here. So 55 divided by 99 is going to be 55.6% or 0.556 if we were to actually calculate that out as a proportion. So that's how these row and column percentages work. So let's review a little bit about variables. Our independent variable is going to be the cause. It's usually going to be shown in the column as it was in the previous table. And our dependent variable is the effect and is usually going to be shown in the row of a bivariate table. In addition, we have thing, what we call extraneous variables. And these are variables that influence the independent and or the dependent variable and impact their relationship. And so we have two types of extraneous variables that we need to worry about. Intervening variables go between the independent variable and the dependent variable and mitigates the impact of the independent variable on the dependent variable. On the other hand, antecedent variables go before both the independent and dependent variable and affects both causal variables. When looking at bivariate relationships, we need to ask three main questions. Is there a relationship, first off? A relationship is said to exist if percentage distributions vary across the categories of the independent variable, such that it looks like if we change categories of the independent variable, it's going to change the percentages for the dependent variable. The second thing we need to ask is how strong is this relationship? The strength of the relationship is determined by the difference in percentages across the different categories. So how much or how strong that relationship is depends on how different those percentages change or how much those percentages change. And then third and finally, the direction of the relationship is important. The direction is positive if both the independent variable and dependent variable move in the same direction so that if the independent variable goes up, the dependent variable also goes up. But also, if the independent variable goes down, the dependent variable goes down. So whether the variables go up or down, it's a positive relationship if the variables are moving in the same direction. On the other hand, negative relationships are relationships where the variables move in opposite directions such that if the independent variable is increasing the dependent variable will be decreasing if the independent variable is decreasing the dependent variable will increase so the variables are moving in the opposite direction so here we have an example here we have again column percentages here because the total here and that means that it is likely that race is going to be our independent variable and that our dependent variable is going to be home ownership. And so this table looks like it's looking at the relationship between race and home ownership. And we need to take some time to look at this table and figure out what's going on. But we also should consider what are some potential extraneous variables. Things like income might be an intervening variable that might come between your race and whether or not you own a home. So be ha you know, your, your race may impact your income, which may impact your home ownership. So that might be an intervening variable. We might think of other intervening var variables such as where you live, right? What city you're trying to buy in. Uh, but we could also think of some antecedent variables such as your family's wealth that you're born into. If your family is wealthier when you're born, you're more likely to probably be able to own a home. And so there's different variables we might want to include in our analysis that might impact both race and home ownership, such as family of origin, but also things like income, geographic location, etc. 
This adding other variables to our analysis is known as elaboration. And elaboration is how we begin to account for the fact that our independent variable and our dependent variable do not exist in isolation. Looking back at the relationship between race and homeownership, these do not exist in a vacuum. Different places have different housing prices, different occupations have different incomes, different racial groups have different incomes, people are born into different family statuses and different wealth, people have different educations, all those things are going to play into the relationship between race and homeownership. And so elaboration involves adding in these extraneous variables in order to control them. And when we add in these variables in order to control them, they are called control variables. And these control variables are supposed to account for potential outside influences on our independent and dependent variable that might cause what we would say a spurious relationship. A spurious relationship is where the relationship we're seeing doesn't really exist, that it is random. So the relationship between race and home ownership, if we were to say it is spurious, would mean that there is no real relationship, that what we're seeing is just random chance or caused by another variable. Conditional relationships are when a bivariate relationship differs for different conditions of the control variable. And the example here is that the relationship between religion and views on abortion might be conditional on gender, such that religion may have a differing impact on abortion views depending on if a person is male or female. Elaboration is great, but it has its limits. One of the issues is that our society and social interaction is so complex that we cannot possibly account for or, or include all the potential extraneous variables. Therefore, we must carefully pick and choose which control variables we want to include in our study. All right, that is it for this week. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of your week, and I'll talk to you next week.